So it just doesn't make sense to feed cats dry food when it's so low in moisture. It basically chronically dehydrates them. If you're trying a wet food or raw food that doesn't have these flavor enhancer palatins, they're, your, your cat's basically like, I want my junk food. I don't want this good food. I personally used Alnatrin when I started with Jericho. I started with Alnatrin simply because Hair Today is where I bought his meat from and the premix that they had was Alnatrin. So it was easy for me to buy the meat, bones, and organs grinds plus the Alnatrin supplement from one. And please, please, please do not cut your cat's whiskers off. It's very disorienting for them and they feel it as well. Hey friends, it's Jess and Jericho. And the truth about dry food is basically that it's the exact opposite of of what the cat would eat in his natural habitat. So the first very big difference between the cat's natural diet and dry food is the moisture content. Now our cats come from the desert and they rely on their prey for moisture, AKA their water consumption. There are no lakes or cat water fountains in the desert. So they, they have a naturally lower thirst drive and they rely on their food for their moisture needs. And prey, mice, rats, small birds, small rabbits, they're about 70% moisture. And dry food is only 10% moisture. The highest that I've seen is 14%. But that's still a very, very significant drop from the cat's natural prey. So we're going from 70 all the way down to 10. And there are even veterinarian books that say a loss of as little as 10 to 15% of its moisture could be fatal. I mean, if you think about it, we are all about 70% moisture. Water is essential for digestion, assimilation of nutrients, proper hydration, proper urination and defecation. Like, Water is essential for life. So we're going from 70 to 10% of a loss, that's 60% of a loss. And in these books, it says a 15% loss could be fatal. Now I hear you saying my cat drinks plenty of water. I've heard this many times before. And so I looked into what the average cat eating dry food only would have to consume in terms of water every single day just to stay hydrated. And the cat would have to drink over eight ounces or 200 milliliters every single day just to stay hydrated. There's even a study among beagles where they fed one group a dry food diet and the next group a moist food diet. And what's very interesting is that the moist food group had a lot of their water intake from food. They didn't really have to drink a lot of water but the dry fed group had to drink so, so, so much more water because the moisture content was only 8% in the dry food compared to 75% in the moist food. And then interestingly, they fasted the dogs. So both groups fasted from food altogether. And when they were fasting, they drank the, about the same amount of water. Very interesting. So that just shows you when the animal's eating dry food only, they have to drink much, much more water. Now I understand that this was a study with dogs, but dogs actually have a good thirst drive. They will drink enough water to maintain hydration. But again, cats have that naturally low thirst drive. So that's why it's important to understand that dry food is way, way too low in moisture for cats. Think about all of the cats that have kidney disease and you know they, their kidneys are just starving for water. And what's the solution there? You give them fluids, right? More moisture and electrolytes. So it just doesn't make sense to feed cats dry food when it's so low in moisture. It basically chronically dehydrates them. The next truth we'll talk about dry food is the flavor enhancer palatins. Now you might be thinking, well, I've tried wet food, I've tried raw food, my cat doesn't wanna eat it. He only wants to eat dry food. This is very common because Dry food is high in carbohydrates, even if it's grain-free. And manufacturers know that cats are not grain and carb eaters by choice, right? They eat muscle meat, bones, and organs, their entire prey. And the carbohydrate amount of a mouse is about 8% on a dry matter basis. 
But with dry food, it's about 33%. That's the average that I found among 80 different brands. The highest I saw was 49%. So it could be up to half the amount of food is carbohydrates. So manufacturers know that cats are not grain and carb eaters by choice. So they have to come up with a way to entice the cat to eat enough of it so that it's actually nutritious. And they do this with flavor enhancer palatins. And they basically spray these on the food so that it's a strong smell. And the cat is, is like, ooh, I wanna eat this. And then unfortunately the cats often develop an addiction to these palatins. And that's why they become so picky about switching foods because if you're trying a wet food or a raw food that doesn't have these flavor enhancer palatins, they're, your, your cat's basically like, I want my junk food. I don't want this good food. It's kind of like how we get a little addicted to sugar. Seriously, you know, candy, chips, these same companies also make cat food. So it's it's very dicey. You know, your cat is is literally addicted to this food. And, and that's, you know, the unfortunate truth about dry food. That's why your cat is so picky about it because... He wants his junk food. Now, I've talked about palatins a lot before. And again, the reason that they need to add these palatins is because dry food is very high in carbohydrates. And no, cats do not require carbohydrates. In fact, if you look at the NRC, if you look at AFCO and FEDIF guidelines for nutritional guidelines, which pet food manufacturers have to abide by when they create pet food products, they don't list a requirement for carbohydrates. So that just proves that it isn't essential to the cat's diet. If it was, then they would have a minimum and maximum of amount of carbohydrates that pet food manufacturers had to add. But cats don't use carbohydrates for energy. They use animal-based fat and protein as a source of energy. And carbohydrates really just fuel hunger and weight gain. And when they break, and when carbohydrates break down in the body, they break down into sugar and they're stored in the body as fat. So again, the cats don't utilize carbs as a source of energy, it just gets stored in the body as fat. That's why a lot of cats that eat dry food typically end up gaining weight because with these flavor enhancer palatins, the low meat-based protein in the product, high carbohydrates in the product, the cat has to eat more of it for it to actually be nutritious. So this encourages the cat to overeat. And the more the cat eats, the less satisfied he feels because he's not getting the proper nutrition that his body needs. And these carbohydrates breaking down into sugar just wreaks havoc on the pancreas and also insulin production. Another reason right here is you know, overweight cats that eat dry food typically develop diabetes. And there's a veterinarian, Dr. Elizabeth Hodgkins, that owns a patent in which she treats diabetic cats. So she switches them from a high carb, low meat based protein and a low moisture dry food to a more appropriate high meat based protein, low carb and high moisture wet or raw diet. And all of these cats have, have improved. And even in two instances, the cats went into remission, so they no longer relied on insulin after they were switched to the appropriate meat-based diet. And in two different instances, this was Dr. Hodgkin's personal cat that she boarded. They ended up feeding her dry food while she was away. And there was also a clinic cat that lived there. They adopted her out and they fed, them dry, fed the cat dry food and diabetes returned in both instances. So the diabetes disappeared, the cats no longer needed insulin because they were eating an appropriate meat-based, high moisture, low carb diet. But then when they returned to eating dry food, which is high in carbs, low in meat-based protein, and low in moisture, diabetes returned and the cats needed insulin again. And in both cases, Dr. Hodgkins went back to the appropriate meat-based diet and both of the cats went into remission again and no longer needed insulin. It's really crazy because a lot of veterinarians and people might think diabetes is incurable, but it can easily be prevented and also easily be cured if you're feeding the proper diet. Now, of course, with diabetes and insulin, you know, it's you have to work with your cat's doctor. So I would recommend monitoring your cat's blood glucose levels at home and also dosing insulin according to that. That way you aren't 
depriving your cat of insulin or overdosing your cat on insulin. Now, the next truth about dry cat food that we'll talk about is the low quality meats that are included in it called 4D meats. And that stands for dead, diseased, dying, disabled. And AFCO says that this is allowed and these are typically meat byproducts and meat meals. AFCO states that these low quality ingredients are allowed in pet food as long as those ingredients are rendered. And rendering means that it's subjected to high heat and high pressure. And they say that this is to kill any potential bacteria that is in these diseased meats. But what about euthanasia drugs? You know, there are pet food recalls for pentobarbital and all of these euthanasia drugs. That explains how it happens because they have these diseased dying feed animals. They want to, the farmers want to sell them because they want to make money. Obviously they're in business to make money. So they're going to do what they can to make those animals healthy again. If they're diseased and on their way out, they're going to be giving them medication and you know, these medications and potentially euthanasia drugs will end up in the pet's food if they're, if they're using it, if they're using these 4D meats. Yes, high heat and high pressure might kill bacteria, but that doesn't do anything to these drugs. There's a CRS report for Congress on the animal rendering industry that covers this topic extensively, and they state that these renderers convert billions and billions of pounds of these diseased carcasses into not only pet food, but also human products like cosmetics, candles, and, and other things that we probably have no idea about. And the report states that most of these animals come from farms, but they could also come from feedlots, marketing barns, and even animal shelters, plus food waste from restaurants and stores. So I've said this before that Commercial pet food is essentially a recycling bin for the human food waste industry. And that report right there proves it, that it's kind of like baloney. You just like throw everything together and be like, yeah, let's just package it up and say that it's premium. Also, I would, I would like to mention that there are companies that specify which animal they're using and the part that they're using. For example, they will say turkey thigh, turkey liver, turkey heart, instead of poultry byproducts. See, that term poultry byproducts is very vague because there are a lot of animals that fit under the poultry category. Do they not know? Is it that there are just too many different sources that they can't specify which type of bird it is? And then the byproducts part means that it's essentially leftovers from the human food industry, stuff that we don't consider to be edible, like lungs and udders and some of the organs like that. But it could also be beaks, feathers, feet. Now, of course, the cat would eat the entire prey, so that would include the feet and the fur and the feathers, but that isn't their main source of their meat. The entire prey is about 80% muscle meat. Then there's about 10% bone, 10% organ. So if it's only feet and feathers and beaks, that's not sustainable protein that's suitable for a cat. And we have no idea of knowing which parts they're using because all they say is poultry byproducts instead of turkey thigh, chicken breast, chicken liver, chicken heart. I hope that makes sense. Hey friends, I hope you are enjoying today's show, but I wanted to tell you about my Switch Your Cat to Raw ebook right quick. If you're confused about cat food labels, frustrated that your picky cat won't eat anything but dry, and you've tried everything, then my ebook is for you. I help you cut through the BS on the cat food label, switch cat food properly, please your picky cat, and feed raw safely. I've included cheat sheets and printables to fast track your success and make your life easier. Check out my Switch Your Cat to Raw ebook in the description below and on JessCatacles.com. Now let's get back to today's show. Now I want to give you some background and some inspiration on feeding your cat better and this whole transition journey talking about Jericho's transition journey. So I adopted Jericho in August of 2017, 
It's right now, it's September 2022, and I've been upgrading and transitioning his food ever since I adopted him. So I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. I don't want you to feel stressed and think that you have to go all in 100%. Take baby steps, celebrate those small wins, and just focus on getting better and better each day, better and better each week, better and better each month each year. Cats are sensitive to food changes anyway, so you'll want to take baby steps. For example, I adopted Jericho in August of 2017. I gave him about a month to adjust. He settled in very nicely. He uh, bonded up with us very quickly. Very gregarious when he, when the foster mom dropped him out off. He was just walking around strutting like he owned the place already. So for Jericho, it was very easy transition to the new home. But if your cat is feeling kind of antsy and a little antisocial, maybe wait a little longer to start changing the food. I always suggest feeding what the cat was originally eating before you adopted him, before you brought him home. That way there is some consistency in his life because they get very scattered and they don't like changes. So Continue to feed what your cat was previously eating, and then once you feel that your cat is settled, then you can start transitioning to new food. Since Jericho settled in very quickly, the very next month in September, I started the transition to better quality wet food. So he came to me eating Frisky's wet food. Thankfully, he wasn't eating dry food, but he was eating very, very low quality wet food. It was those massive, big soups, <laughs> soup-sized cans of friskies, you know, just the, you just plop it down on a plate. <laughs> the pate, you know, very low quality. So he, that's what he was eating when he came to me. Then I saw the movie Pet Fooled, great movie, highly recommend it. That's really what kick-started my urge to learn how to read cat food labels, to research cat nutrition, because I've had cats my whole life, 12 before I, or 11 actually, before I adopted Jericho. I had no idea that all of these rules and label guidelines existed, no idea. So I saw Pet Fooled, very, very eye-opening, very great movie, highly recommend it. That's what made me interested in learning about cat food labels. Plus at the time I was cat sitting and working with hundreds of cats. And I realized, huh, it's not only my cats that I grew up with that have health issues, huh? All of these cats that have health issues are eating dry food. Maybe there's something something wrong here. So I started learning how to read AFCO label guidelines and also just researched, you know, ingredients and about the company, you know, who are they owned by and who's the manufacturer, where do they get their ingredients. So in September, the month after I adopted Jericho, I found a company called Red Barn Naturals and they had wet canned food. So I was like, all right, instead of jumping straight to raw, let me upgrade from the wet food he's currently eating to a better quality wet food. Since he's still new to the home, you know, I don't want to shock his system. So I found Red Barn Naturals and uh, they don't even make wet cat food anymore. They still have dog food, but they don't even make wet cat food anymore. He transitioned well to that food. And then I started researching more and then I'm learning more and figured out, okay, this brand maybe isn't the best. And then I found The Honest Kitchen and their ingredients are human grade quality. And they're able to say that because they produce the food in a human food production facility. So if the pet food isn't produced in a human food production facility, they cannot claim human grade. And even AFCO doesn't have very strict policy on this because it's so new. So you might see some cat food brands that say human grade, but then they can't actually prove that it is. But The Honest Kitchen did win a lawsuit against the FDA and was able to prove rightly that their, their pet food ingredients are human grade quality. So it's the same ingredients that we would buy at the store. They dehydrate, they, they lightly cook it and then dehydrate it, and then you rehydrate it with warm water. Now, The Honest Kitchen is much better quality than compared to most, but the dehydrated food is fairly high in carbohydrates. It's about 29, 30% and carbohydrates, even though it's grain free, because they use things like sweet potatoes, you know, that doesn't have any grains, but it is car carb rich. So it is better quality, it's still a step up because it's human grade ingredients and it's lightly cooked and then dehydrated versus canned food, which who knows what the quality of the ingredients are, probably feed grade instead of human grade. And then it's 
cooked and pressurized and, and you know canned. So the honest kitchen was still a step up for me. So Jericho really liked that food. And honestly, when I was making it, you mix it with warm water to rehydrate it, then let it sit. Smells like food that we would make. Smells like like chicken soup or something, you know, like fresh, very wholesome food that we would make. Now, back in 2017, The Honest Kitchen only had dehydrated food and the, even the box is different than it is now. But now they do have wet food like pate and shredded little cartons of wet food. So if you're looking for something that's better quality, maybe in the transition, then I would suggest checking out The Honest Kitchen. Again, it's, it is slightly higher in carbs than ideal, but it's still a step up from canned food and it's a good transition food on your way to raw. I wouldn't say rely on it forever, but it's it's still a step up and it's a good baby step to get your cat from whatever he's eating now to raw. Then a few months later in December of 2017, I found a company called Rad Cat and they also don't make raw cat food anymore, unfortunately. That was a very good brand, the FDA bullied them basically into closing down. That's a separate story for another day. But I, I found Rad Cat. It was at my local pet food store. So I was able to buy locally, you know, I mean, a couple of train stops away. So I was able to buy it and I was like, all right, let me offer it as just a little treat. I started out with the myoglobin, which is the thawed juices. We think it's blood. It's called myoglobin, but there's a lot of taurine and other water soluble nutrients in there. So I would just drizzle it on top of Jericho's Honest Kitchen rehydrated, and he loved it. I would add a little little bit of raw. He loved it. Continue adding a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more of raw. Eventually, he would only eat the raw and completely ditch the Honest Kitchen. Like, he didn't want any of that. <laughs> he just wanted the raw. So I was like, all right, that's cool. So I just, I continued the transition so that he was eating all raw. Then after Rad Cat, I found they closed down, so I had to find another one. I found Balanced Blends. They also don't make cat food anymore. So there are three brands that I used to use that don't make cat food anymore. This is exactly why I suggest not relying on one brand because you never know when they're going to close down, there's going to be a recall, or there's going to be a change in formula. It's like you, you just don't have that control. But if you have multiple brands, then at least if they stop making it, you have others you have a backup <laughs> to, to feed your cat and your cat already likes it. And when I got Balanced Blends, they only had chicken and turkey at the time. I wanted to add more variety. And so I was researching and found Hair Today in, I think it was January, 2019. And that's when I started getting into more of a homemade diet. So I was using their premix from Alnutrin and also their grinds. And so that's kind of when 2019 is when I started on the homemade journey. And but he's been eating raw since 2018. And again, today in 2022, I'm still upgrading his food. So instead of feeding ground raw, I'm feeding whole prey and also whole chunks of raw meaty bone, organ and muscle meats and I'm still upgrading. So again, don't feel like you have to do everything perfect in the beginning. Now, since a lot of these raw food brands aren't available anymore, I will put some links in the description to my best raw cat food brands of 2022 video. And Hair Today is still up and running. I do still highly recommend them. So I'll put the, the link for their website in the description as well. Now I hear you saying, Jess, you only have one mouth to feed. I have four mouths to feed, five mouths to feed. One time somebody even said that they have 20 mouths to feed. So I completely understand that when you have multiple cats, it becomes more time consuming and, and potentially more cost related, but not necessarily because when you feed raw, you don't have to feed as much of it since it's fresh, it's not cooked the nutrients are more bioavailable, the nutrients are easier to digest. So for example, a 10 pound cat on the wet cat food label it would probably say something around seven ounces per day. But that same 10 pound cat eating raw food would probably only eat three and a half to four ounces max per day. So it's pretty much double what you're feeding when it comes to wet compared to raw. I understand that it takes more time but I personally view it as a fun experience. I think it's worth it to spend the time 
to make Jericho's raw food. And it really is, is super easy. So if I had multiple cats, what I would do if I'm just starting on raw is choose a raw cat food brand that's already complete and available at my local pet store, number one, number two as a default, available online. So one of the first brands that I'll talk about is called Steve's Real Food. It's also called Quest Cat Food. And Steve Brown is a pet food formulator, been around for decades, has a great book for for dogs, but he also makes cat food. And the cat food is very, very impressive. He does not rely on synthetic supplements to complete the diet. He uses all whole food ingredients, which is amazing. And he has specifically named meats like beef bone, beef heart, beef liver. And then he uses a few extra things like ground eggshell for the calcium and then kelp for the minerals and raw goat milk for the probiotics and enzymes. So he's really focusing on whole food ingredients instead of relying on the long list of synthetic supplements that you see in most cat food brands. His frozen raw food also comes in nuggets. So they're easy to portion and serve. So instead of this big one pound block of (laughs) raw meat, you have little nuggets. So that's much, much easier to portion and serve. Although if you have multiple cats, maybe that one pound chub is exactly what you need because maybe you have six cats, that whole one pound could be one or two days worth of food right there. And Steve's Food Quest Cat Food is available uh, across the US. So he has a store locator on his website. Just put your zip code in and and find the nearest store to you. I would suggest calling the store first to make sure it's in stock before you go. And if that one isn't in stock, have a list of other brands to ask them about just so you're not calling all these places 10 times. And all of these other brands also have that store locator on their website. So again, just put in your zip code and find one nearest to you. The next raw cat food brand that's available at local pet stores is small batch. This is another one that uses whole food ingredients instead of relying on a long list of synthetic supplements. And they have a lot of variety too. They have beef, turkey, chicken, rabbit, pork, duck. I personally don't feed rabbit or pork, but they they do have that variety, which is key. Small batch has frozen sliders, so that'll be really easy to portion and serve because you could just cut cut them into four and then serve them that way. And that's e- they're easy to break apart and you just you just thaw them about 24 hours before you need it, but your refrigerator is different than mine, so adjust as needed. And again, with variety here, Small Batch does have more variety available compared to Steve's. Focus on one change at a time, but variety is great in both the proteins that you feed and the brands that you feed. So there's another raw cat food brand, Kiwi Kitchens, that They come in tubs and there are some synthetic supplements, but this is one that I've found that's better than other brands like Instinct and Tiki Cat. With Kiwi Kitchens, all of their products fit under the 25 to 94.9% of the named ingredients. So there's up to 94% chicken if it says chicken dinner the minimum requirement is 25%. And then when you read the ingredients, you can tell that the bulk of the ingredients are from meat-based ingredients because they don't add apples or, or kale or, or cranberries or anything like that. So they focus on the meat ingredients and then they have a small amount of synthetic supplements added to it. Kiwi Kitchens does have less variety than small batch, but they do also have a venison and small batch doesn't have venison, neither does Steve's. So I would I would start with a protein that my cat's already eating. That'll make the transition to raw much easier because your cat's already used to eating that protein and it won't be such a drastic change. And Kiwi Kitchens is located around the US, including Washington. I know my Washington friends always say, you know, raw cat food brands don't deliver. It's very expensive because they have to register each individual product with the state. But if you're buying it at your pet store, then you can just go there and again, just search on their website from your zip code, find one nearest to you. Now, if I was feeding multiple cats homemade raw cat food, I would start with the easiest option, which is using a homemade cat food premix. I personally used Alnatrin when I started with Jericho. I started with Alnatrin simply because Care Today is where I bought his meat 
from and the premix that they had was alnutrin. So it was easy for me to buy the meat, bones and organs grinds plus the alnutrin supplement from one place. There are other supplements available like TC Feline. My mom just started using that with her four cats. I like TC Feline honestly more than alnutrin because TC Feline uses more whole food ingredients and fewer synthetic supplements compared to alnutrin. Now, don't get me wrong, alnitrin is still a good choice if that's the best option that works for you. You can, If you don't want to buy from here today, you can buy directly from their website called knowwhatyoufeed.com. They also have recipes. And it's important to note that each premix has its own recipe that you have to follow. So you can't just make up your own recipe, follow what it says on the bag. I would suggest reading the bag, reading their website, reading the details before you buy it so that you know what to expect and what ingredients you need. So my mom started using TC Feline for her four cats and she got the premix that already includes liver. Again, do what's easiest for you and you can always upgrade from there. So TC Feline has three different premixes, one that does not include liver, so you would have to add your own source of liver, and then two different proteins, beef and chicken, that already do include liver, so you would not have to add a fresh source of liver. I personally think that adding a fresh source of liver is better, but again, do what's easiest for you and you can always upgrade from there. If it's easy, you're you're more likely to do it, so just do that, that's what I did with Alnitrin. Just mix it with with the grinds and that's that. When my mom tested TC Feline at first, she mixed it with egg, one egg yolk, and also chicken meat. The cats didn't really go for it. So then I said, maybe take out the egg yolk, maybe take a different protein and see what happens. She tried it with just the premixed water and beef and she said the cats really liked it. So you'll have to experiment to see what works best with your cats. Maybe go with the minimal ingredients first and then as your cat adjusts to it, I would add the egg yolk just for the extra beneficial nutrients. The other raw cat food premixes available online like Easy Complete, food for life and no better for cats are very comparable to TC feline. All three of them are very similar. They use similar ingredients and those three do use more whole food ingredients compared to alnitrin. At the end of the day, variety is key. So I would personally use multiple premixes instead of just relying on one, but just focus on one first. Then as your cat adjusts to that, or your cats, your multiple cats adjust to it, then you can add another premix into the mix (laughs) once your cats are adjusted. That way you have multiple brands to circulate through. You're getting a variety of ingredients because they probably source their ingredients from different areas that's going to warrant different nutrient profiles. And then if for some reason they've changed their formula or they stop making the premix altogether, then you're not stuck. You have multiple options that your cats are already adjusted to and already like. I do have a video dedicated to these premixes, so I'll put that in the description below. Now you may have seen Jericho eating on a food mat instead of a plate and a bowl. The simple reason is that cats hate eating from bowls because their whiskers are very sensitive. They don't like it when stuff touches their whiskers when they're eating. So the cat's whiskers are very interesting. They actually have nerve endings in them. And you may notice that when you're playing with your cat, the whiskers are out, very, very out, and sometimes they move around too. But when your cat's sleeping, they're more confined to the face and more relaxed. And this is because when cats hunt, they can't really see things too well up close. You know, if you put your hand to your face, you become cross-eyed. The same happens with our cats. So they use their whiskers to detect movement when the prey is that close to them. So their whiskers, again, they have those nerve endings and that helps them detect, detect movement that's close to them. They also use their whiskers to see if they can fit through something. So let's say they're, they wanna walk through a fence, there's a hole in the fence, When they walk by, their whiskers at the end will detect the fence. And if they detect the fence, then that means that their body isn't small enough to fit through that fence. So it's very interesting. Their their whiskers are little feelers for them, basically. So since they can feel on their whiskers, 
when they're eating, they don't like their whiskers to touch anything. So that's why using a very deep bowl isn't great for cats because this can stress them out and also cause whisker fatigue because their whiskers are constantly touching the bowl while they're trying to eat. This is annoying and stressful for cats. So I personally feed Jericho on a food grade silicone mat. It's flat and it's very large. And so I can put Jericho's food around it so he can move around and he can eat without his whiskers having to touch anything. If this option doesn't work for you, a very flat, as flat as you can get it, plate is also a good idea. I would avoid plastic because plastic traps bacteria even with regular washing. So for example, for Jericho's water bowls, I use stainless steel. Make sure it's not aluminum or, or has any lead in it. Same with ceramic. I would you know make sure there's no there's no lead or any any chemicals or any anything, any paint on it. The best option I think is glass. Again, as long as there's no lead in it. And please, please, please do not cut your cat's whiskers off. It's very disorienting for them and they feel it as well. Their whiskers are very, very much part of their life. They need their whiskers. Please don't cut them off. And please feed your cat on a flat, shallow surface so that he doesn't develop whisker fatigue or stress. Thank you so much for listening and watching. If you're watching on YouTube, please let me know in the comments which topics you'd like me to cover next. And please consider rating this, this podcast so other cat parents can find it. Help me help as many cats as possible. Thanks again for listening and watching, and I hope you and your cats have a wonderful day.